Life is full of challenges. The challenge to win, to learn, to fit in. But in other parts of the world, many people face bigger challenges. The challenge to survive without parents when you're just 10 years old. The challenge to be educated when you can't even afford paper, pens or books. The challenge to grow up without bitterness in a country that has been ripped apart by civil war. These are challenges in today's world. But over 200 years ago, a remarkable man had the energy and vision to overcome the same challenges and transform societies. Edmund Rice did so by empowering the poor and giving a voice to the vulnerable. Our challenge today is to ensure that the work he began can continue. Edmund Rice was born in 1762 in Kilkenny to a farming family. When he was 18, he was employed by his uncle, a Waterford merchant. Within a few years, Edmund was a wealthy man. But when his wife died soon after giving birth to their only child, a daughter with special needs, he found himself called to put aside his old life and help Waterford's poorest and most vulnerable children. Edmund's energy made a profound difference to people. He built schools, he provided food, he made sure the children had adequate clothing. But just as important, he inspired others with his vision and commitment. Even by the time Edmund died in 1844, the order he founded in Waterford had spread far beyond Ireland, and today his spirit touches the poor and vulnerable on all five continents. Yet poverty and oppression still blight the existence of millions. So our challenge today is the same as Edmund's, to ensure that poverty doesn't stop people from fulfilling their true potential. People like Faith Mohini, a student outside Nairobi, Kenya. The school helps me financially, which by this I've been able to study from Form 1 until up to now in Form 4, and still hoping that I'll go to university. So this school has, is doing a really, really good job in enhancing my ambition. The school is situated near Islam, so education means having a better future. If I get to have a better future, I'll be able to help others get a better future in the community. In what we've been told in school that Edmund Rice is able to help everyone, the Christian brothers have been able to help many students from different family backgrounds, not only even the students, but they've also made an effort to go to their families and see how they can help them. Edmund Rice will be very, very happy about our school because it's changed so many lives, so many young lives. Because right now, as we speak, we have successful students who have been, who have been working and they come back to school, tell us how much the school has helped them. And they, they, they also help us, so he will be very happy. 12,000 kilometers away in Peru, Griselda Loma, a former Christian Brothers student, explains how her school also empowers the poor. El colegio ha brindado mucha, mucha facilidades a muchas personas y a lo mejor hasta la oportunidad de, de cambiar de vida. Si pudiesen ayudarlo a salir, no solamente para ambicionar un poquito, sino un poquito más. De, despertar un hambre o una sed de que ser pobre no significa de no poder lograr no poder ser profesional por el contrario eso es lo que quisiera en este colegio que hubiese que alguien despertarse un hambre una sed por querer lograr salir a la universidad y conseguirlo Porque la pobreza no significa que no se pueda. Inteligencia todos la tienen. No hay ser humano que sea distinto al otro. Y el dinero no nos hace ni más ni menos a otro. Simplemente es, a lo mejor, eh, tener esa facilidad de poder ingresar a una universidad o un poquito más de preparación para eso. ¿no? Eso sería. En uh -huh. East Timor, Brother Bill Tynan turns his compassion into action, just like Edmund Rice did 200 years ago and he's not alone. Bill, Brother Bill Tynan just puts everything he has into Comunidad Edmund Rice and um, he's 
part of the reason that I'm here as well in seeing his dedication, his, motiv his motivation to keep coming back every year, year after year. Um, sometimes he gets, um, he hits brick walls but he never stops, he just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. His perseverance is a huge inspiration. Four happy children. Well Katrina came here as a, a teacher of dance and she's taught herself Tetum. She's now a brilliant speaker of Tetum and she's, her ability to teach English is I've watched her classes and they're just quite outstanding. The energy she's got, the response she gets from the kids is just brilliant. So she's just a brilliant teacher. Every day, they're just their faces when they learn something new and when they're able to um, speak back to me, something that I've taught them the previous week or the day before, um, when they're able to have a conversation with a, a little 10-year-old girl on the side of the road in English um, and ask her where she's going and then she can ask me back, how am I and where am I going? Um, it's just, it's, it's brilliant and I get so much out of them. They're just beautiful children and beautiful country. I came over to Timor uh, about three months ago. Um, I'm a nurse from Bathurst in Australia and I wanted to come over and do some volunteer work before I got married, which I will be doing next year. Okay. Because these people don't have any access to medicines, they don't have paracetamol or cough syrup in their cupboards, we see a lot of common coughs and colds, runny noses from children. Um, so it, we work as a pharmacy as well. Things that we could get in Australia, just down the street, that we would have at home, they, um, they come to clinic for. For a short-term volunteer, what, again, she has done is, is quite amazing, that she's, oh, can we make posters to put up in the, in, the, in the clinic? Not just doing the work, but doing the extra steps and the extra time and to make sure that, if possible, what we're started will continue. In Nairobi, Kenya, school teacher Joseph Mbugwa explains how the Christian Brothers Reuben Centre is an oasis for the people of Makulu, one of the city's largest slums. Uh, now the impact of uh, Christian Brothers to this uh, community is uh, very, very high. We have a clinic that provides uh, health care. The children are able to come to school. And uh, we also have our uh, wishers who help uh, children with uniforms. And the Christian Brothers are actually uh, having a feeding program, the, ch the little children get porridge, and that encourages uh, enrollment, and also children are able to come to school on a daily basis. There is a Edmund Rice uh, network program that uh, deals with uh, helping the children to understand their rights, and we have uh, an advocacy uh, program that is uh, going on. We also have the child protection policy that we made, that is actually uh, helping the children to know their rights and what they stand for. The Christian Brothers have actually rolling out the, the programs that uh, Edmund Rice initiated uh, so many years back in Europe. And uh, if, for example, they withdraw, I think you will miss them so much because we actually need their continued help. When he took part in a volunteer immersion visit to Zambia, Irish student Jason Whelan also saw how the example of Edmund Rice continues to transform lives. When I think of Zambia, I think of automatically, straight away, I think of the kids that we were there and we helped. And it's more positive images than, than negative because the kids were really happy. Um, we came across lots of kids because we were in schools, we were in orphanages, and um, a lot of them were orphans um, whose parents had, had died of AIDS. The care provided to the children was vital to their lives because they, they, were, they were fed and they were educated and they were treated for any illnesses. And if the kids of Zambia, and not even kids, adults too, who were treated, um, if they hadn't got the support that they have from the Chris Woods, they, they'd be in a worse, much worse position than they are right now. Every, everywhere we visited was very much part of the community because um, they got as involved as they could get. I realised how lucky I am here to have all this, uh, to have everything I do have. I have a home, I have a roof over my head, I have clothes, I have food, and that's the basic things that people here take for granted. Edmund Rice's compassion still inspires countless people around the world today. 
In particular, it has empowered 300 new brothers across the developing world to work alongside followers and supporters of Edmund Rice and local communities. Now we need to ensure this can continue into the future. Edmund Rice died in 1844, but the story does not end there. His brothers continued his work, sometimes in very difficult situations, always trying to keep his spirit alive. In every continent, they have worked with the poorest people, most marginalized, trying to empower them to take their rightful place in society, living lives as God intended them to live. For much of our history, the Christian brothers worked in schools. Today, our work has expanded into different forms of ministry. But a most noticeable part of our work now is advocacy, trying to be a voice for the vulnerable, for the excluded, trying to be the voice for those who have no voice for themselves. We wish to involve all people of goodwill to work with us. And so we are inviting people into collaborative ministry with us. Some help us through funding, others through their prayers and goodwill, and a few join us. The invitation for you is to be part of this whole project, reaching out to our brothers and sisters less well off than ourselves. Edmund Rice died in 1844, but the story still continues. When Edmund Rice died, a far-sighted journalist asked, Why are you sorrowful? Why are you sad? Mr. Rice is not dead, he lives. Yes, he lives the highest, noblest and greatest life. He lives on in the noble band of Christian workmen to whom he has bequeathed his spirit and his work. Edmund Rice's life and compassion is still a powerful inspiration. By getting involved in supporting the Edmund Rice Beyond 250 appeal, you will help keep his spirit alive in the most meaningful way possible, by helping us continue to empower the poor and give a voice to the vulnerable. Hi and welcome to the Edmund Rice Beyond 250 Appeal website. On this website you will find many fun ways to get involved in this global appeal. On the home page you can see three tabs, the Beyond 250 Appeal tab, the News tab and the Get Involved tab. The Beyond 250 Appeal section includes a short version of the appeal video and descriptions of our projects from around the world. Our news section includes stories and photographs from people involved in the Edmund Rice Network. You too can send us your stories and photographs to be included on the website. Our Get Involved section gives you many fun ways to get involved. You will also be able to download a Guidelines for Fundraisers pack from this page. This pack gives you guidelines and ideas to help with your event or initiative. It also has all the contact details for our office in case you need any help. One of the great ways for you to get involved is to create a fundraising page. If you click on create a fundraising page, it will bring you to a form where you can fill in all the details about your event or initiative. You can include a photograph and a description. Once completed, your page will look similar to this. As you can see, there are numerous ways to share your page with family and friends, including Facebook and Twitter. With this page, family and friends can also donate to your fundraiser online by clicking the Sponsor button. They can also find your page by clicking Get Involved and Support a Fundraising or Tribute page. Here you can see a list of pages which have been set up already, or they can use the search bar to search for your page. Another great way to get involved is to send your stories and pictures to us to include in our news section. We want to spread the news about the good work the Edmund Rice Network is doing around the world. You can also submit details of your event or initiative to us and we can include them in our event section. If you want to submit any stories or pictures to us, or if you would just like some help with setting up your page or event, you can click on the Contact Us tab. 
This includes all the contact details for the Edmund Rice Development Office. The main thing to remember is have fun and get involved.